Push go. Oh, you've already started. <laughs> Let's go ahead and open up in prayer. I'm, I'm going to ask our Elder Carter to open us up. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us bow our heads, close our eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we say thank you. We ask thank you, you. Thank you for traveling grace and honor to make it here tonight, Lord God. Father, we ask that you give the speaker on tonight, Lord, what to say, Heavenly Father. And everyone under his voice, Lord God, will receive your word in, Lord God, with love. We thank you for your words being the word all by itself, Lord God. We just ask, Heavenly Father, that we receive it and get an understanding for your word tells us all of our getting to get an understanding. We love you, we praise you, in Jesus' holy name, amen, amen. 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 My goodness. So, what week is this? Four? Yep, this is the fourth. Okay, so that means I probably won't finish this, but hey, next time I teach, I'll just go ahead and pick up where I left off. Amen. amen. So, praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. amen. What we've been talking about is the benefit package of knowing Christ. Amen. The benefit package of knowing Christ. Amen? Amen. And the first thing we talked about was verse 3, how he forgives all of our sins and heals all of our diseases. And we went over multiple scriptures that talks about how God has forgiven our sins and how God does not remember them no more. And also how God... Uh, according to scripture, sin isn't being charged to your account anymore. And so we went over multiple scriptures, and I know a lot of people, when I say a lot of people, I'm not talking about it here. But when people are caught in religion, they need to feel like they have, you know, they got to hold on to something that calls sin in their lives. And it just makes them feel more holy or something. I don't know. It's a religious thing. I just thank God that he has, he has gotten us away from all that religion. And now we know about the truth. Amen. Amen. And uh, one of the things we talked about also was unless we are justified, sanctified, and made righteous, we would not be able to use the benefit package at all. Everything is included in this package. Let's go to Psalms uh, 103. Psalms. And I'm going to read the King James Version. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. When you get there, hold up. You're not there yet. Amen. 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 It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Verse 2, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Somebody say a benefit? Benefits. I like benefits. Who forgives all thine iniquities, who heals all thy diseases. So he forgives us all of our sins and he heals all of our diseases. Who redeems thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Do you believe that? Amen. Slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always hide. Uh, this word says chide. You know, this is, wait a minute, we're in the Old Testament, right? Uh, he will not always, I'm going to say kai, because ch in the Hebrew is, uh, is, makes the K sound. So I'm going to leave it like that. He will not always kai, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Iniquities, that, that word means our wickedness, okay? And so when you read that, how... He has not dealt with us after our, our sins. No, he hasn't. Why? Because if he was dealing with us with all that, then none of us would make it. This Amen. is why we had to have a Savior. Amen? Amen? And so he dealt with it. Jesus dealt with it. Where did he deal with it at? The cross. At the cross. Amen? Amen? For as the heaven 
is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. That word fear means respect, okay? What we're not supposed to be is afraid of God. Amen? As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Okay, that's pretty far, right? Amen. Okay, so you have to worry about picking them back up because the east will never touch the west. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pities them, pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame. He remembers what we he remembers that we are dust. Again, uh, I always tell people, you know, people think they're catching God by surprise. No, they're not catching God by surprise by what you do. Why? Because he knows you. As for man, his days are as grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it and is gone, and the place there, thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear or respect him. And his righteousness unto children's children. All right. We can keep going. I'm going to stop right there, though. Okay? Y'all okay with that? Amen. Uh, I mean, I can keep reading down to 22 if you want. Okay. Yeah, I'll keep reading. To such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. Now, what commandments are is there for us? Love. To love. love one another, right? All right. We ain't talking about that old Mosaic law commandments. Right? The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, of his that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. All right. I read all the Psalms 103, right? And as we started off with this, uh, with Psalms, what we realized is in the beginning there, when it talks about how he's dealt with our sin, and that's what we talked about first, right? Remember, if we went, if our sin had not been dealt with, then we would not have been able to receive any of the other parts of the benefits. The top one, that, that that's why it starts off with he's forgiven our sin. It starts off with that, because if it doesn't start off with that, that means our sin is not forgiven. And if our sin is not forgiven, that means that we are not made righteous. And if we're not made righteous, then none else under that applies to us. So that's why it was so important. This is why God had them put that first. Because once that is there, everything else is taken care of. Once sin has been taken care of, everything else in your life is taken care of. Why? Because now you're under grace. That's right. Amen? Amen. And grace has already did everything, set everything up. When we think about grace, we should always be thinking about the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen? And a lot of times with religion, that's what they forget. They forget about the finished work of Jesus Christ. It is easy to go back to the law when you are not following the finished work of Christ. Go ahead, sir. Amen. It's awesome that you was talking about that because it made me think about last week and when you was reading the scripture uh, where it was talking about uh, there if there is no law, then there's there's no law to break because there is no law. And the same thing, uh, once you stop allowing yourself, when you become transformed to renewing your mind, then you won't live, you won't be sin conscious, as we've talked about, to where you're always remembering your sin, always thinking of your sin. He wants you to, hey, he finished it at the cross, so therefore don't keep thinking on your sin because he's not dwelling on your sin. He already paid the penalty for the sin, as you were just talking about, as you just read. And so it's the scripture is trying to get you to, hey, think on these things. Like it says in Philippians 4 and 8. Fix your thoughts. Yeah, don't think on this stuff that you may have fallen. Think on, hey, I've fallen, but my father has forgiven me. I am worthy. I'm, I'm worthy to get back up and to keep going. 
Amen. That's good because a lot of uh, people, I mean, think about it. Let's talk about communion for a second. For the longest, <laughs> when it came to communion, everybody was told that, okay, before you take communion, you have to first repent of all your sin. You have to, uh, if, if there was anybody that you held unforgiveness for in your heart, you had to forgive them first. And if you didn't do any of that, or if you had some type of sin in your life, then you couldn't take communion. Now, the truth of the matter is, all these liars in church were taking <laughs> communion, knowing that they had something going on in their lives at that time. But the thing was, the only one that was really lying was the person who was up front. Because that is not what that scripture is for. When it tells us to, uh, when, it, when we talk about the communion, the scripture tells us anyway that we do it in remembrance of him. Amen. Not in remembrance of your stinking thinking, not in remembrance of your sin or what you did or whatever. It's all about what he did for us. Amen. Amen? But we have been taught so long to accept the the lower, the, the inferior. We've been taught so long to always think about our wrongdoing against the law. And when we talk about law, we talk about the law of Moses. And if we if we have not perfectly followed that law, then we can't take communion. If that's the case, nobody ever would have been able to take communion except for Jesus himself. And he can't take his communion, but he can't do it by himself. Amen. Communion ain't for Jesus, communion is for you. Amen. 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 And so everyone said, well, you can't, you know, and the people standing up front looking, waiting on the person <laughs> not to take the communion, because when that person don't take communion, now everybody started a little gossip. Yeah, this such and such got caught up uh, doing something. And then they start gossiping in the church, and, 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 and they start looking at the person who's not taking communion. And what does that do? That make you immediately feel judged. Right. right. And that's not what communion is supposed to be about. And so... We have to get out of this religious mindset and get back to the truth, which is grace. And when we get back to the gospel of grace, then we're able to see what Elder was talking about. You know what? When you believe right, when you believe right, then you'll start living right. You can't live right first and then believe right after. It's not going to happen. You only live what you believe. Amen? And so if you taught about the finished work of Jesus instead of being taught about Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, things will start to change in your life. But every time somebody says something, thou shalt not, what's going to happen is you're immediately going to want to do something in that area. And then again, in James 2 and 10, it says if you uh, went against, if you, if you went against one, if you did one sin, if you won, or if you broke one commandment, you broke them all. Now, who can live by that? Nobody. 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 But yet, people are still doing it in their congregations to this day because they never actually went and read 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And so they just passed down what Reverend Green or, you know, Reverend Porchop them passed down, and they just <laughs> keep going. So somebody somewhere along the line got to stop and read the word and study it and get an understanding of what the word is actually saying. Amen. 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 So, oh, go ahead. Pastor, this is really good. You know, I sit here and I laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and I know better. I remember one time we was having communion here and a situation happened at one of my daughter's school. And so in my mind, I had a plan of what I was going to do. Not a plan. And it wasn't nice. And so this particular Sunday on Communion Sunday, um, Deacon Brown passed me with communion. And I said, Deacon Brown, I'm not taking mine today. He said, why not? And I explained to him the reason why. <laughs> you don't go to somebody else. <laughs> he said, now Deacon is crying, now you know better. I said, yes, sir, I sure do. <laughs> and, but I ended up taking the communion. I did take my communion. I did. But he said, now you know better. I said, but he, I got some business to take care of. <laughs> and then I'm going to come back and take my communion. He said, that's not how it works. And I 
yeah. together. So I'm glad that you are, we're online with this, you know, talking about communion, mm -hmm. and so we won't be caught up in law and the right and wrong and what God has done for us, you know, and the cross and everything. And, and even when we know better, that's why I was sitting there, I'm like, man, I knew better, but I had a plan. I was going, I was going to go. But you know what? God fights our battles. <laughs> he fights our battles. And when it came, when everything came out, God showed up and showed out. I was just being impatient that time. I was like, God, you know, I got, I got somewhere to be, somebody, somewhere to somebody to see, and I'm about to do some action. <laughs> So I thank, I thank God for his grace and his mercy. Amen. For giving way. Amen. Amen. This is one of y'all deacons. <laughs> God be Gabriel. God be Gabriel. Amen. So you leave. <laughs> I'm thankful um, for the teaching of the communions. And then I wish that everyone received it because I recall a time you know, years ago when I was married and I was one I didn't take communion because I was just you know extremely upset with my husband on that day and I wasn't trying to forgive my own to I wasn't ready to discuss some things to hatch out so I was like no well the normal boy I get a call the next day you know I so you didn't take communion everything all right and you know at this time I wasn't talking to nobody in the church so it was like I don't talk to y'all what so from that moment on, I was like, well, I don't care what's going on. I'm going to take that communion because I don't want nobody looking at me funny. And then I felt guilty because it's like, well, you know you're not supposed to. Now, I really do thank God for, for, for <laughs> giving you revelation to explain to us and give us an understanding. Because I think about how many others, just like myself, right, even still today, they take communion because they don't want nobody looking at them funny. They don't want to, they don't want to stand out, right? But then they feel guilty about it because they believe that what they're doing is wrong, when really, if they knew better, they'd understand that that community doesn't have anything to do with their, you know, with anything that they've done. But, I mean, they're not, I don't want to say they're in the wrong church, they're just not in the right place to get the right teaching. Amen. But I thank God for revelation on that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so it's good to, it's good to, to that's, why, that's why it's good to study the word. Amen. Uh, so, it says he forgives all my sins and he heals all my diseases. Can you believe that he heals all diseases? Amen. 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 Let's go to Isaiah 53 and 4. And this is New Living Translation we're going to right now. Isaiah 53 and 4. Isaiah 53 and 4. You know, and I'm bringing this scripture up because this scripture and, and what's the other one? In 1 Peter 2 and 24, they actually say the same thing. You know, and this is, you know, when a person is going through uh, some issues, physical issues or whatever, um, or they're looking for some healing, these are the scriptures that's most likely that's given. More than, than any other scripture, these are the ones that's been given to the person. Are you there? Amen. It says... Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. He's talking about Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Now, was Jesus back here in, when Isaiah was here? Uh -huh. No. So this was talking about what was to come, right? What he would do, right? Mm -hmm. So Jesus was, look, yet it was our weaknesses he carried. He carried our weaknesses. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God for his own sin. Not so. But he was wounded and crushed for our sin. Y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. He was beaten that we might have peace. He was whipped and we were healed. Amen? Amen. I read it for the King James. Most people know it for the King James. It's his Isaiah 53, starting at verse 4. It 
Okay, and it says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Now notice how it says that we are healed, right? Now let's go to 1 Peter 2 and 24. And I'm going to read it from the King James since we just got finished reading the King James, right? First Peter 2 and 24. Amen when you get there. Amen. Amen. It says, who his, who his own self, well, do I need to go up a little bit more? Let me see. Okay. Verse 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Ye were healed. So after Jesus came on the scene, it's now the faith that we should have shouldn't just be faith in Jesus. But we should also have the faith of Jesus. It's not so much, just like before it said in, in Isaiah, it says, by his stripes we are healed. But in, second, but in first Peter it says, by his stripes we were healed. So when, when it talks about we were healed, now it's talking about a finished work. It's talking about Jesus already took care of it. This has already been, been handled. Can you receive it? That's Amen. the question. Can you receive it? Amen. 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 And a lot of times people can't receive it because they're being taught wrong. And what I mean by taught wrong, people are told that, well, you know, uh, you, you, you sin a little bit, and so now you can't. Uh, that's why you, you have these afflictions. And, and people are just really ignorant when they say stuff like that. That like God is putting something on you. He put a, a sickness or a disease on you because he's trying to show you something or humble you. I hear so many people say that, and that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Why? Because why would Jesus make somebody sick and then turn around and heal them? He came and he healed everybody that was brought to him, right? And we don't talk about that. So if he came to heal people, then why would God make people sick? It, it, it don't compute. All right? It just does not compute. Nevertheless, people are still talking that same crazy stuff. I can remember the guy that comes out and cut my grass. He, he goes through this church in Killeen, and y'all know, y'all know him, and well, some of y'all know, if I say his pastor's name, y'all know who he is, all right? <laughs> but he was talking about when COVID came. Well, you know, this is God, you know, trying to separate the, the, the wheat from the, from the tares. I'm like, so you think God is the one who put this, did this cause of COVID? If God didn't cause COVID, COVID came because somebody did something wrong over in China. <laughs> I said, some mistake happened. I don't know if it was in, the, in, in, in a, some type of lab or it was from some bat. I said, but nevertheless, that's where it came from. God didn't do that. God is not going to make you sick so, so that you can listen to him. That's not how God operates. You know, we have things happen to us because of our decisions, like Jonah, Jonah, God was like, hey, Jonah, I need you to go to Nineveh, no, I need you to go to Nineveh, and I need you to talk to the people and let them know that what they're doing is wrong, and if they don't get it right, then I'm coming, and I'm going to destroy that whole land. And Jonah was like, oh, hey, no, Lord. Mm -mm. <laughs> Jonah had a, he had a problem, right? He had a, a discrimination problem. So he's like, no, I'm not doing that. So he got on a boat and went the other way. And when he went the other way, what happened? Well, he ended up getting into a hurricane. And from the hurricane, he was tossed out of the boat, tossed out of the boat into, he went with a well snatched him up, right? And he spent three days in the belly of a well and to the point of death. And then when he finally 
Lord, forgive me. <laughs> then the Lord, uh, then the well spit him up. And where, where did the well spit him up at? Right where, Nineveh, right where he was supposed to be. God will always get us to where we're supposed to be. The question is, are you going to get there through peace or are you going to get there through hell? <laughs> I don't want to go through hell to get what God has for me. Amen? Now, he did not put a hurricane on, on Jonah. No, neither did he uh, uh, have Jonah get eaten by a whale. But see, Jonah's consequences for his decisions caused all this to happen. And God turned, turned around his bad and made it work for his good. Amen. And that's how he does with all of us. Amen? Amen. 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 So let's keep going. Uh, let's go to Matthew 4, 23. Yeah, I'm reading the New Living Translation. Matthew 4, 23. Because after we get finished reading all these, you have to ask yourself the question, wait a minute. So why do people say God made me sick? Or God caused me to wreck? Or God caused this to happen. You know, I got somebody in my family right now. Uh, not my, my household, but my family, right? Who think everything that happens bad, well, God was just trying to get me to sit down. And that's all. I said, wait a minute. God is trying to get you to sit down. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I'm, I'm not tracking here. You know, I had to get my, I had to get my, my toe cut off. So God was just telling me I needed to sit down for a little while. <laughs> right? Said, okay, all right. Well, that's what you think. Then, they, then she had to go back and get her, have her foot cut off. And um, she was still, still the same thing. Oh, that devil is so busy. You know, God, God was, God just, you know, just trying to t tell me to, to keep, to keep, uh, what did she say, to take a rest. And I'm like, who is God to her? Is the devil God to her? Or is... Yeah, right. It's your level. And so now she's getting her leg cut off, and it's, and it's like, well, God is, no, God is not doing this to you. God doesn't cause these things. I mean, wouldn't that be double work for him? That's like somebody, how can I say it? That's like if you were uh, digging a hole, right? And every time you take two scoops out, you, you take them and scoop them back in. You're just wasting time. And God's not wasting time. It's only us that waste time. Amen. Amen. All right, are you there? It says this. Jesus traveled through, I'm reading the New Living Translation. It says, Jesus traveled through Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, preaching everywhere the good news. That when you see good news, it's talking about the gospel, all right? Preaching everywhere the gospel about the kingdom. And he healed people who had every kind, one kind. Every. Just COVID. Every kind. Every. Cancer. Every. Every. every kind of sickness and disease, right? News about him spread far beyond the borders of Galilee so that the sick were soon coming to be healed from as far away as Syria. And whatever their illness or pain, I'm sorry, whatever their illness and pain, or if they were possessed by demons or were epileptics or were paralyzed, he healed them all. How many did he heal? All. Everyone that came to Jesus, he healed them all. All, you know, I, I and, and you know, you have to look at some of these that, for instance, where it says uh, they were possessed by demons or were epileptics. Some people seem to think that if you're if you got epilepsy, you have a demon, so they can cast it out of you. Mm -hmm. It's not like that all the time. <laughs> no, it's two different things. That's why here is wrong as demons here, and then it says or epileptics, mm -hmm. all right? Because one is a sickness or illness, and the other is you being oppressed by the devil. All right? 
or some some devil. How about that? Mm -hmm. It might not be. It may be his little imps. <laughs> all right. So he healed them all. All right. I, I had to get us there. He healed them all. All right. So he didn't leave nobody out, right? All right. So let's go to Matthew nine. Matthew 9 and 18. New Living Translation. Amen when you get there. Amen. Oh, you know what? Let's go back. I'm sorry. Let's go back. There's something I missed. Yes, Lord. I'm going to put it out there. All right. I, I went back to Matthew 4 and 24. Um, let me start, I mean, 23. Notice what it says first. Then Jesus throughout Galilee, then Jesus traveled throughout Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, preaching everywhere the gospel about the kingdom. Notice, what did he do first before he started healing people? Teaching and preaching about, he was talking about the gospel. The gospel, what is the gospel? Good news. That means, what is good news to somebody that may be sick? Hey, that you can be healed. Amen. What is good news to somebody who's poor? Hey, you can be rich. What is good news to somebody who is, no, I better not say that. <laughs> better not say that. But anyway, <laughs> what's good, you know, we're talking about the good news, the gospel, the good news is always the, there it is. The good news is always the opposite of something bad that's happening. You get it? With something negative. And that's why Philippians 4 and 8 says, fix your thoughts. Now, religion will teach you to fix your thoughts on the law. All right? Oh, you sin, you sin. The more you think about sin, the more you're going to want to do it. And this is why we don't talk about it, because why? Everybody had it. Somewhere along the line in their lives, Everybody has sinned somewhere. And if it wasn't for God, if it wasn't for the simple fact that he wasn't charging into our accounts today, we'd all still be known as sinners. Plain and simple. He's stoned to death. <laughs> can't get stoned to death, bro. Can't do it. Amen. So the first thing had to be, it had to be taught. And this is what people are not getting. It had to be some teaching and preaching about the good news, about, hey, how you can be healed. Hey, how you can come out of debt. Hey, how you can, you know, become wiser. Hey, how you can have victories in your life. Hey, how you can how you can beat this situation that's going on. You know, a lot of people are concerned about their credit. Hey, here's how you can live above that credit thing. You know what I mean? Because when it comes to God, we don't walk by credit. We walk by faith. Amen. Amen. And one thing we've learned is in God, the blessings, uh, the Bible says the blessings in him is yes and so be it. It says yea and amen, which means yes and so be it, right? Nowhere does it say no. So if they're telling you no and your credit isn't good enough, that's fine. Go somewhere else. Why? Because God has a door that is open for you. Maybe you're just not at the right door at that time. Amen? Amen. But you don't quit, you don't give up. That's what Galatians 6 and 9 tells us. Never get weary of doing what's right because in due season you will reap. You know what reap means, don't you? You will receive whatever it is you look for if you don't fail, if you don't give up, if you don't quit. You can't be a quitter in the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 You can't be a quitter. You have to stay the course. And even if you don't stay the course, God always makes a way to bring you back. He makes a way that it's open for you to come back. You know how the, how the scripture talks about um, that and people have been saying it wrong for the longest. They said, well, God won't put more on you. you <laughs> well, it never said God won't put more because God don't put nothing on you. All right? But the Bible talks about when you have a lot going on, it said he always makes a way of escape. Okay? He always makes a way of escape. And so, just like Jonah, there was a way of escape. I mean, it was rough for him, but there was a way of escape. He had the nerve to be mad when when he, after he got finished, 
preaching to the uh, Ninevites, and they repented. And he had never been mad at them because he wanted to see them die. Yeah. <laughs> Just like religion, he need to get himself together. Stinking thinking. Mm, stinking thinking. And so we need. That's why the scripture now, if you look at today when it's under grace, what we are not preaching about is sin. Because if we constantly preach about sin, well, how are we going to get to preaching about healing? How are we going to get to preaching about a financial health? How are we going to get to, to preaching about anything that the Bible tells us to fix our thoughts on if all we're talking about is sin? And why do people continue to talk about sin when sin has been dealt with? Just like the scripture said, hey, if there is no law to break, you can't break the law where there is no law. Amen. 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 Go ahead, sir. Amen. Just as she was talking, it made me think about how in the world where some people are known by the fruit that they bear and how it talks about if you are of negative fruit, then you're going to produce negative fruit. And like if you're bad, you're going to produce bad fruit. And if you're good, you're going to produce good fruit. But if you're always being taught bad and being taught negative, how are you going to produce good fruit? How are you going to produce good? How are you going to speak good if all that's being put in you is negative? All that's being put in you is death. If life is never being taught to you, if you're never being taught how to fix your thoughts on these things, if you're always being taught negative, 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 you will never speak positive. You will never be positive. You will never see positive outcomes because all you're looking at is being sin conscious. Is looking at sin, looking at negative. And so you, you'll you never see any good in anything. And, and those are the people that are always walking around looking like they've been sucking on lemons all day, but they swear, I'm saved and I'm sanctified. But but you're looking mad all the time, time. and always speaking negative, always speaking the problems instead of the, the answer. Mm-hmm. Saved and sanctified. No, you saved and sour. <laughs> saved and sour. Mm-hmm. Saved and sour. Don't know why, but okay. Uh, Matthew 9 and 18 now. NLT. Amen when you get there. Amen. Amen. It says this. As Jesus was saying this, oh, me go ahead and go about that. Now I need to start with verse 18 because if I go up any higher, so we talk about something else now. I'm going to have to explain all that right now. As Jesus was saying this, the leader of the synagogue came and knelt down before him. My daughter has just died, he said, but you can bring her back to life again if you just come and lay your hands upon her. As Jesus and the disciples were going to the official's home, a woman who had a hemorrhage for 12 years came up behind him. She touched the fringe of his robe, or the hem of his garment, for she thought, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Jesus turned around and said to her, Daughter, be encouraged. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was healed at that, at that very moment. Okay? Verse 23, when Jesus arrived at the official's home, he noticed the noisy crowds and heard the funeral music. He said, Go away. So the girl isn't dead, she's only asleep. But the crowd laughed at him. When the crowd was finally outside, Jesus went in and took the girl by the hand and she stood up. The report of this miracle swept through the entire countryside. Now Jesus didn't let, because they didn't believe it didn't affect the fact of what he was doing. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, and apparently her father believed, her family believed, mm-hmm. and because they believed, the girl was healed. Verse 27. After Jesus left the girl's home, two blind men followed along behind him, shouting, Son of David, have mercy on us. Now Jesus was busy here. Y'all see, he just going from one to the next to the next, healing people. They went right into the house where he was staying, and Jesus asked them, do you believe I can make you see? Yes, Lord, they told him. We do. That sounds like they use some faith to me, right? Then he touched their eyes and said, because of your faith, it will happen. 
Now the King James says, the way the King James said is, according to your faith, let it be unto you. Amen. All right? And suddenly they could see Jesus sternly warned them, don't tell anyone about this. When it's dead, they, they spread his fame, his fame all over the region. All right? Now I'm showing y'all these scriptures because it's something that we need to know. Because before anybody can get healed, then be need, you need to be preaching the gospel on healing. Amen? Before anybody can, can uh, uh, get out of their financial situation, but then it's going to have to be some teaching to preaching about finances. You know, instead of somebody just getting up telling you, well, you need to get your tithe. That ain't good enough for a lot of people. You just need to get your tithe. And the first thing they think is, well, you know, the pastor just want my money. And so they think it's going, but no, that's because they haven't been taught about it. Amen. And if they haven't been taught about it, then they're going to immediately think that somebody is trying to take advantage of them. Amen? Amen. Matthew 15, 29. And I know we're going through some scriptures here, but I'm going to sum this all up for y'all in a little bit. Go ahead, Elder. I see you. I was just about to say, uh, right where you was at in Matthew 9, mm -hmm. 35, where you pretty much exact as where you was at in 4 and 23. And it, and it reads this, the NLT, mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus traveled through all the cities and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And wherever he went, he healed people of every sort of disease and illness. Scripture back scripture. Scripture back scripture. And we got a lot more. Are you there, Matthew 15, 29? Is that what I said? Yes. All right. Jesus returned to the Sea of Galilee and climbed the hill and sat down. A vast crowd brought him the lame, blind, crippled, mute, and many others with physical difficulties, and they laid them before Jesus, and he healed them all. The crowd was amazed. Those who hadn't been able to speak were talking. The crippled were made well, the lame were walking around, and those who had been blind could see again. And they praised the God of Israel. Y'all see a pattern here? The gospel is preached. People are being healed, right? Let's go. To, uh, I'm going to take you back to Matthew 9 again. Matthew 9 and 1. We got more time. Matthew 9 and 1, NLT. I think it's NLT. Yep. Amen when you get there. Amen. That's about Jesus here in the, in the paralyzed man. It says, Jesus climbed into a boat and went back across the lake to his own town. Some people brought to him a paralyzed man on a mat. Seeing their faith. Seeing their faith. Say that again. Seeing their faith. Jesus said to the paralyzed man, take heart, son. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Blasphemy! <laughs> this man talks like he's God. Some of the teachers of the religious law said amongst themselves, Jesus knew what they were thinking, so he asked them, why are you thinking such evil thoughts? Is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or get up and walk? I will prove I will prove that I, the Son of Man, have the authority on earth to forgive sin. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, take your mat, and go home, because you are healed. Amen? Amen. Now, <clears throat> when, we, when we look at this, all right, I need y'all to understand something. Here we can see that 
sickness, we can see that sin was a was a type, or we can see that sin was at times classified as a, as a type of sickness. Okay, so does this mean that a person is in sin because they don't see their their complete healing yet? Does this mean that they're in sin because they don't they're not healed immediately? Of course not, because just as Jesus said, when he said, look, their sins are forgiven, and the same time he said your sin, your sin's forgiven, his healing came on. That's why the scripture starts with, first he heals all of our, I mean, he forgives all of our sins, and then he heals all of our diseases. Why? Because when your sin is forgiven, now you are justified, or you are made holy. And so since you are made holy, you are, now sin can't stay with you. No. Sickness can't stay with you. Exactly. you. See what I'm saying? And the same faith that we used, and that's the thing about it, the same faith that we used to believe that our sins are forgiven should be the same faith we used to get healed. Amen. Amen? Go ahead, sir. You remember where, where I was going, you know. Um, this is why so many people are not being healed the way they should be today because they, they, they really don't believe that they've been forgiven of their sins because religion continues to push it on. And, and as much as they continue to think that they are, well, you know, I'm sinning, I'm, I'm not worthy of, they think they're not worthy to be healed, they're not worthy enough to, to come before the throne of grace, they're not worthy enough to receive from God, and because of that, there are a lot of people in the church today that sin when they don't have to be. And they're still going through a lot of things that they shouldn't have to go through, and they have not been taught, so they're ignorant of the, of the truth of, of, of what God has already done. Mm -hmm. When the Bible tells us that where sin abound, grace abound much more, but they don't know this because they're not being taught the covenant of grace. They're being, you know, pushed the law. They're being pushed the law. They're being pushed the law. They've been preached at the law, and this keeps them in bondage of religion, and they're never freed from the bondages because they have not realized what the covenant of grace is. Because they're not being preached or taught love, which is grace. Amen? Amen. 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 Another hand, where you at? Go ahead, sir. Amen. And it brings me back to exactly where you was at in nine, but down at the bottom, 36. It goes to what Elder Carter was just saying. Amen. 36 to 38. And it says, he felt great pity for the crowds that came because their problems were so great and, did, and they didn't know where to go for help. They were like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, the harvest is so great, but the workers are so few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send out more workers for his fields. Mm. More workers to do, to, to do what? Spread, spread the good news. Spread the, the gospel, the good news. Amen. And that's what's not being spread in the church today. And when you don't spread the gospel, the good news, then how can people accept what's good? What's good is if you're sick, you can be healed. If you're broke, you can be wealthy. If, if, if you're uh, not smart, you can be wise. <laughs> I'm not going to use another word. But <laughs> you're friendly. You're friendly. You're friendly. Oh, if, if you've been defeated, you, you can now have victory. Amen. Amen. If you were inferior, now you, you can be superior. Amen? Amen. Did you have a hand up? Okay, all right, all right. You, were you finished? Yes. Okay, all right. Uh, Philippians 3 and 8. I gotta go here. Wait a minute, is that the right place? No, Galatians 2 and 16. I'll get to Philippians 3 and 8. You can, you can, you can write it down. King James. I want to show y'all something. Uh, Galatians 2 and 16 because I'm about to go off on a tangent. All right, I'm about to go off on a tangent. I'm back in my seat up right now. Uh-oh. Y'all ready? King James. Galatians 2 and 16. Amen. And then I'm going to go to Philippians 3 and 8. Okay, so Galatians 2 and 16 says this. King James, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. See, now, first, we, in order for us 
to for our sins to be forgiven, we had to be what? Justified. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have been justified. So knowing that a man is not justified by works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Do you see that? Yeah. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And this is why the whole thing of Psalms 103 started out with your justification. Basically, sin being forgiven first. Right? Next one. Philippians 3 and 8. Are y'all ready? King James. It says, yeah, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the ex excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. And be... Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me make sure I'm in the right place. What did I say? Yeah, three, and eight. Three, and eight. three and eight. Three and eight. Okay, okay. All right, yeah, let's keep reading. I just finished eight, right? Yeah. Nine. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, I mean self-righteousness, right? Mm -hmm. Which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. All right, so I read those scriptures because I wanted y'all to see something. Now, and when we go back to Hebrews, or when we go to Hebrews, and we talk about the generals of faith, Abraham, Noah, all them, now, they all have faith, just like everybody we just got finished talking about, about the faith they had to be healed, right? Mm -hmm. Now, they had faith in Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus, they had the faith in Jesus. Now, what's the difference between faith before grace and faith after grace or during grace, we have, we have hmm? faith of because the faith after the law during grace is not just faith in Jesus, but it's the faith uh, of Jesus. Amen. See how many times we talk about the faith of Christ, faith of Christ. It's always the faith of Christ because we have to move from you know you're going to always have faith in Jesus, but I need you to understand something. None of them had the Holy Spirit living on the inside of them. None of them had that type of love that you got. Why do I say that? You know, Whitney Houston sang that song, uh, the, greatest the Greatest Love of All, and she said that the greatest love is where? She said it's inside of her. Now, when I was religious, I used to think, oh, she out of control. She, she must <laughs> think she her own God or something. Something like she got the greatest love. But then when I learned about grace, I was like, that's not what she's talking about at all. She's talking about the Spirit of God, the greatest love. This is the greatest source that you will ever receive love from. And God is where? Inside of you. The Holy Spirit is where? In you. The Bible says that greater is he that's where? In me. In me than he that's in the world. So now they all had faith in Jesus and they were able to get healed. You guys today not, should not just have faith in Jesus, but you can have the faith of Jesus. They didn't have the Holy Spirit living in them. You have that power. You have the power that they don't have. They didn't have. And a lot of them saw lots of miracles happening. So why can't we see these miracles in church today? Because people are not believing. People don't have the faith not just in, but people don't have the faith of Christ. And it's easy to have the faith of Christ because we don't have to do anything special to get it. Only thing we have to do is simply believe. Amen. 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 If we know that the Holy Spirit lives within us, then everything, your healing starts where? Inside. Inside. Right? Amen. Your victory start where? Inside. Inside. Everything starts inside. Your financial blessing starts. Inside. It don't start in your bank account. No. Amen. It starts. The greatest love is inside of me. Amen. 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 It's inside of you. The greatest love, he is inside of you. 
That means the authority that Jesus had to go around and heal others, you have not only the same authority, but you can heal yourself. Amen? Amen. 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 Go ahead, sir. Amen. You know, it just takes us back to what uh, First Lady was going to teach you, having the mind of Christ. You know, when you have the mind of Christ, you know the power that you possess. When you have the mind of Christ, you know that what you believe will come to pass. When you have the mind of Christ, you know that there's nothing that you cannot have. Because God says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen? And this is where when we're talking about the mind of Christ, we're talking about being Christ-like. We're Christians, Christ-like. We know that Jesus was able to do all things, but why can't we believe that we can do all things if we're Christ-like? We got it. It starts, like you said, with believing. Well, the scripture, Jesus, it, the scripture even told us Jesus said, "Greater things." You Greater, do. Amen. Greater amen. things that you, you do in my name. Amen. 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 So, question: Should we avoid going to physicians because we have the faith of Jesus? No. 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 I hate hearing silly teaching like that. I've seen on the news where families had uh was one family had their daughter she was struggling she was sick she was having uh seizures there was something happening and what they kept doing was calling their pastor out he kept coming over and they were having these these they're supposed to be acting like they were casting demons out of her right i, I just call it a seance that's what they were having a seance and the girl ended up dying and she ended up dying all they had to do was take her to the hospital God uses physicians. All knowledge and wisdom comes from God. Yeah. He gave the physicians the knowledge to heal people through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen? Jesus isn't against physicians like some religious teach. <laughs> All right? Let's think about Luke, right, in the Bible. Luke, Luke, Luke. Luke was a physician. Amen. If, if, if when people start believing in Jesus, they didn't need physicians, that means Luke was completely out of a job. Hey. Oh, Jesus, what's <laughs> 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 the thing is, Luke can heal people. If he, if, if, and the thing about it is, Luke could probably heal people the way Jesus did because he was the disciple. But in the same way, Luke could also heal people because he was a physician and he can do it medically. Amen? Amen? So God works through physicians. He's the one who gives them the knowledge and the wisdom to be able to do things. Amen. 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 You know, um, Jesus gave an analogy dealing with uh, physicians in uh, Matthew 9 and 12. You know, and then even, and then when you think about it, he a physician, in fact, and there's a point where they call Jesus a physician. So he ain't against, he ain't against himself, Amen. nor is he against any other physician. So don't never get to that place where they call it, I call it a hyper faith. Don't get to that hyper faith point where you don't believe that God is working through man because God is always, from the beginning of time, from the, when Adams was, Adam and Eve were created, from that point on until today, God has always used a man or woman Amen. to get things done in the earth. When I say man, I'm talking Amen. mankind. Amen. 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 And there has not been a time since man has been created that God did not use man to get things done on this earth. Amen. Amen. So it's time to get past just having faith in Jesus, but we need to have a faith of Jesus. You know, in many places the Bible says we walk by faith or we live by faith. And, I, and, and it says something different in Malachi. Right? Malachi. No. I think it's Habakkuk. Okay, yeah, it's Habakkuk, or Habakkuk, 2 and 4. And I always wonder what was the difference here. And, I, and the Lord finally revealed it to me what the difference was. And uh, it says this. 
I guess I need to start at, and I'm reading the King James Version, okay, and I need to start at three. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, that means though it takes some time, wait for it, because it will surely, somebody say surely, surely. it will surely come. It will not carry or not wait too long. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Notice what it says, his faith. Why does it say that? Because everybody in the Old Testament before Jesus died and, and, and rose again, before he left, ascended and gave us his spirit, everybody in the Old Testament had to live by their faith. And this word here is better translated as faithfulness. Faithful, is that what you're saying? And that's what it is. This word is better, and, and when you go back, it's by their faithfulness. So it was their faithfulness to God that caused things to happen. Now, us, it's, your faithfulness, it, our lives are not like that. Because none of us is that, that faithful to God. Right, right, right. Um, man, just tell the truth. Everybody, you know, people, oh, well, I'm... I am faithful to God and I do. You are nothing but a big liar. <laughs> You're a big liar. So now, back then, remember, it was by their faithfulness that things got done because today it's not by our faithfulness, it is by our faith. Amen. 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 So it's a difference. I have to end the message. I have to end the teaching right here. Amen. <laughs> but this Amen. is a good point. Amen. And you have to understand, remember, Psalms 103, the reason it started off again saying that first he forgave our sins and because once he, he forgave our sins, immediately we became known as righteous. We were justified. We were made right in God's sight. We were made holy in God's sight. And once we were made right, uh, righteous, Everything under that now belongs to us. Not because of our faith just in Christ, but because of the faith of Christ. The Holy Spirit lives within us, and we need to use that power that God has given us. Amen. 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 We want you to know we love you here at Christian Freedom Ministries. We thank God for you. Hey, come on out to the Bible studies and ask your questions. We'll have some answers for you by way of the word. We want you to know that we thank you for watching us this evening. And hey, remember this. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Stay free.